Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petiti Garden Centers and we're actually in our Oakwood Village store and um, we have the house plant section right behind us and it kind of made us think about all the questions we get about the problems that you can find on your house plant. So we wanted to do a little house plant RX, talk about the three most common insect problems and then the most common cultural slash watering problem. We'll talk about that as well. So um, the first one is mites. And I think a lot of people misdiagnose this when they're looking at their plant material. Sometimes you can see mite issues, sometimes you can't. But here's a huge cultural thing that you can do is keep the area around your plants more humid. Spray mist your plants, Put your plants on a humidity tray, okay? So that's the tray, just a plastic tray or like a, a saucer, a plant saucer. Little bit of pebbles and then fill that saucer with water and keep the water in that saucer to the top of the pebbles. And it will naturally obviously evaporate and cause a more humid condition. The reason being is that when your plants are in a very dry location, they're near heating vents, they have all this dry air circulating around them, that is a prime spot for spider mites, okay? Now, how do you identify spider mites? Lots of times you will find very thin little webbing and you think, oh, there's a spider on there. Nope, it's really the spider mite usually. And the webbing is very, very thin, very, very tiny. So you have to look pretty close to find those webs. They don't make like a intricate web like a normal spider would. Um, the other thing that you're looking for is stippling on the leaves. So stippling on the leaves means that you'll see like little dots or little pinpricks all over the leaves. Uh, spider mites do have sucking mouth parts. And so what they do is they're, they're literally sucking the juices out of that plant material. Sometimes it's on the foliage, sometimes it's on new growth, but normally you can see that stippling on a leaf and it could be on the top side or the bottom side or both. So look for on both sides of the leaves, that's pretty important. Spider mites are tough to get rid of. Um, the reason being is they are kind of classified as a totally separate category of insects, okay? So you have to go for a specific mite control, okay? Um, there are definitely sprays that are formulated just for mites. Um, this is Mite X, this is from Bonide. Um, and what's really interesting about this is it, it controls mites and it does control a couple other household insects that are listed like aphids, um, thrips, those types of things. Um, and the active ingredient in this control is oils. So you're gonna see things like cottonseed oil, clove oil, garlic oil, in this type of spray. Normally you would spray this, you would cover the entire plant, all the foliage, top and bottom of the leaves, right? The entire plant you're gonna spray and coat and you usually will apply this once every seven to 14 days as you're treating and as you see problems with that, okay? Now, there are other sprays that will work for mites and generally I recommend something that has neem oil or just a regular neem oil spray in it. The reason being is neem oil works three different ways. It will work for mites. It'll work for many common household insects as well. It'll also work for disease issues. So if you have powdery mildew that you find on your leaves indoor, um, downy mildews, all those types of things, neem oil will usually work. So I tend to have this pretty handy um, with me to work on house plants and also you can use it on your outdoor garden as well. So it works indoors, outdoors, works on all three things, mites, insects, and also um, your disease control too. So um, this is a nice product to have around, especially if you see mites in the area, okay? Um, the second most commonly asked about insect indoors is gonna be white fly. White fly is a little bit easier to see, um, but what you gotta look is you have to look underneath the leaves. They're always on the underside of the plant. So if you're just looking at the top, over the top, 
plant's not looking good, you're not really sure what's going on, look on the bottom of the leaves and you will see little tiny flies. They do have white wings, pretty broad white wings, okay? And when you move the plant um, or brush the plant, you'll see the white flies take off around. And then what they'll do is they'll kind of fly around and then they'll come right back and um, go on the undersides of the leaves again, okay? Um, white fly are pretty easy to control indoor. So again, you could use different things like insecticidal soaps, which we have here. This is a Spoma insecticidal soap, but Bonide makes um, insecticidal soaps too. So insecticidal soaps you can use. You can use the neem oil that I mentioned before. In this respect, again, you need to make sure you're treating the underside of the foliage, okay? Be sure you're spraying the under, underneath part. Um, another thing that I, <clears throat> excuse me, that'll work on whitefly is your systemic houseplant controls, okay? Now, we'll only use these on a tropical house plants that you're not consuming. So this is not something that I want you to put on your citrus tree, for example, inside, because hopefully you're gonna be consuming that fruit at one time. But the systemic house plant controls usually have a control for eight weeks. You're applying it to the soil of the plant, okay? Watering it in, the root system absorbs that systemic, carries it throughout the plant, and when the white fly come and start, again, they have sucking mouth parts, so they'll start sucking the juices from the foliage, they will ingest the systemic and then they'll die from that, okay? So if you're looking for a longer efficacy, a longer treatment period to keep those plants clean, uh, the systemic will work very, very well on white fly. And also our next insect is mealybug, okay? So mealybug's a little bit tricky to um, diagnose because I think a lot of people look at it and they think it's powdery mildew. It's this white fuzzy, spot sometimes. Sometimes it's a, a clump and it's like a clump of, of mealybugs put together. So they think, oh my gosh, maybe it's more of a disease issue than it is an actual insect. And that can happen a lot. Sometimes you'll get those confused. So mealybug, and we'll, again, we'll show you pictures, but they are fuzzy white insects. And um, again, they're, they're sucking juices out of the plant. They like to congregate, especially on a new stem, new bud growth. Um, where it's really, really juicy, okay? Um, so that's where you'll normally find them. Um, I have the best luck removing mealybug with an actual cotton swab and um, dipping it, you're gonna pour out some rubbing alcohol, okay, into a small dish, and then you're gonna go ahead and dip that cotton swab into a small dish and actually physically remove those mealybugs. That works really, really well. Um, the other thing with mealybugs is you can use the systemic insect control. Um, however, you usually wanna physically remove them and then apply that systemic because it doesn't work immediately. And also you can use the neem oils, you can use the insecticidal soaps too to help reduce the reoccurrence of the mealybug. Mealybug, you have to stay on top of. It really can uh, reoccur um, fairly quickly. Their life cycle is pretty fast as far as um, turning into adults. So um, again, just stay on top of it. Really inspect your plants about once every five to seven days. Make sure that you're staying on top of the mealybug. So you want to um, do that and, and keep them clean. Another thing that I, uh, I hadn't mentioned is cultural practices. If you can keep those plants clean, you know, dust free, dust them off every once in a while. Look for um, insect um, issues. Again, um, keep the humidity up around them. Um, all of those things are gonna be great. Remove dead foliage. Um, don't let the foliage sit at the base of the plant, you know, in the pot, in the soil. That's not good either. So make sure you're cleaning those house plants. That'll keep you, you know, aware of issues that might occur, crop up. If you can get an insect problem taken care of early on, that's always gonna be best. So um, it's good to kind of just keep on inspecting your plant material. One last thing that I wanted to mention that a lot of people have problems with is um, brown tips, especially through the winter months. And you might have a spiky plant like a Dracaena and it has these brown tips on it. Typically, 
The tip of the plant is going to tell you what's going on around the plant in that environment. Normally brown tips, if they're just at the end of that leaf, it's normally a drier condition, very low humidity. So we'd always um, tell you to increase humidity, make sure that you don't have the plant around any type of um, venting, you know, um, hot or cold air drafts. Um, that will always help, so increasing the humidity. If you see that brown tips are kind of moving or saturating from the tip of the leaf into the main leaf, um, that could indicate a different problem. And it's usually with the root system. And um, normally it's over watering that the root system is not draining. It's stuck in water, it's waterlogged. So in that respect, I would go ahead and I would remove that plant from the pot, inspect the root system, um, remove anything that is rotten, um, diseased, damaged, anything like that. Um, add some new potting soil. It's a great time to repot your plants right now. And um, that will help, of course, reduce any of those um, real dark brown tips that are moving into the main leaf, okay? Um, so that's just four real quick things that we, um, you know, we encounter a lot of questions about them. If you ever have a problem identifying any of these problems, bring in um, some leaves that are damaged, put them in a Ziploc bag, bring them to Petiti Garden Centers. We'll be happy to diagnose what's going on with the plant and we'll definitely um, help you with some Rx there. Mm -hmm.